today's video is going to be a little bit of a mix because I want to update you guys on the next steps of my cancer treatment and as you can see in the title that I'm going to be getting radiation. So I'm going to be talking about that and the conclusion as to why you know, I need to get radiation and then I'm going to share very exciting plans with you guys that I want to do in order to optimize my outcomes and to treat the cancer while I'm getting the radiation. So stick around for that. I'm going to talk about that in detail. And then just in between the video, you'll see some clips of me going to the appointment and then I'm going to talk about some educational stuff in case any of you want to know. Hey guys, so I am at a stoplight right now and I'm on my way to my appointment for the simulation. I'm going to be getting a proton therapy which is a little bit different than uh, regular radiation for the area where they took out the tumor in my uh, my brain, the base of the skull. So I'm going to um, you know, basically explain all of that in this video. Um, but I just wanted to say hi and good morning and I've got my Starbucks uh, treat for the day. So usually whenever I go out and drive by myself, that's what I do. And oh, gotta drive. So yeah, so there's another red light. Um, but as I was saying, um, I usually get a Starbucks coffee and almond milk latte whenever I go and drive by myself. I usually don't really drink coffee and I quit caffeine a while ago, but Lately, I've been kind of craving it a little bit, um, so I've been drinking this mushroom coffee, which has um, a very small amount of caffeine in it compared to others, and it's supposed to be a lot healthier for you than, you know, regular. Um, I don't put any sugar in my coffee, and I usually drink it with almond milk, so um, I'll show you guys the mushroom coffee. To recap, if you, especially if you haven't been following my journey, I was doing really well with the cancer, and everything seemed to be shrinking in all of the parts in my body. The only one that grew was the one in my base of the skull. Uh, around the new year, it grew rapidly uh, by about 30 to 40 percent and it was causing a lot of symptoms and I had to get emergency craniotomy. So they were able to go in there and remove the whole tumor. Um, my neurosurgeon said that he was able to get like 100 percent of it. So that was really good. Um, but after that, I had met with my radiation oncologist and um, also alongside with my neurosurgeon, they had recommended that I get radiation. So this is a little bit problematic for me because I have a history of having this tumor since 2019 and I already had radiation twice to the area. But despite all of that, it still grew. And if anything, I think that the radiation might have contributed to the inflammatory response and made the micro environments not responsive to the systemic therapy that I'm on. It seems to have developed some sort of resistance. They also think that it might be the location of the tumor that may have led to the growth because of the blood brain barrier and the treatment not being able to get there. So who knows why it grew, but it did. So now the reason why they want to radiated again is um, because they want to get rid of all of the microscopic cells and um, it's kind of a standard protocol that once you remove some sort of a tumor in the brain um, you're obviously going to leave behind some stuff and so the goal is to get rid of the surrounding microscopic cells that you can't really see to prevent recurrence and they think that the recurrence can is very likely to happen in my case at first i was really against it i really did not want to do more radiation especially to the areas in my brain because i know the long-term side effects that it could have and i've gotten so much radiation already so i really didn't want to do it but i had to sit down and really think about it and after talking with the radiation oncologist he said that if it grew back I would be in really big trouble because I don't really know when it's going to grow back and by the time it grows back, we do radiation, it could potentially not work as well and um, I could have a bigger area and I don't even know if surgery is feasible again the second time. So it's in a very sensitive area and that area can really uh, cause problems and push on my brainstem and I could be in big trouble. So I think considering 
where it is and the chances of it recurring, um, I kind of just have to do it. So I'm going to Emory um, in Atlanta, in uh, downtown Atlanta, and it's the Proton Center there. So um, this is my first time there. It's a lot of traffic to get there and it took me um, almost an hour and a half from where I live. Um, I live pretty far. I live um, up northeast of Atlanta. Um, and the morning traffic is pretty horrible. <laughs> uh, I came from New York and you know this and California and this is just as bad. So the difference between proton and photon radiation is that proton is a particle and photons are like your conventional radiation when you talk about x-rays and things like that. So that's a wave. So the difference is that the particle stops at the tumor and it doesn't go beyond it. So it stops there and then it um, and then the energy gets released and then it destroys the tumor as opposed to the uh, conventional radiation where it's wavelengths and they go straight through the tumor. So it passes through the tumor and it can hit the surrounding tissue behind it or in front of it and destroy that tissue. So you kind of get like a lower dose radiation to, the, to those areas. So proton radiation is not necessarily more effective in destroying the tumor, uh, but the benefits of it is that it destroys less of the surrounding tissue um, as you know, because of the particle versus the waves. So I thought that was good because you know, with where my um, where they want to radiate me, I want to have as little damage to the surrounding brain tissue as possible. So that's going to be the cerebellum and the brain stem. Yeah, so it's actually a really nice day, lots of traffic. The center is going to be straight up front, so. Okay, I found it and I think this is, yep, where I come in. So I'm in the room now and I just saw the nurse and she just kind of went over some basic information with me about potential side effects, what my schedule is going to look like, um, and what we're doing today. So today I'm actually just going to go downstairs to do a CAT scan and an MRI and the, doc the doctor will be able to use these images to um, plan out my radiation treatment. Um, and so after that, I should be good to go home. They're going to give me a schedule. Uh, I'm going to be getting radiation 10 fractions, so that's over two weeks. So that's Monday through Friday. I'm going to be going every single day. So that's going to be fun to be driving here um, an hour each way every day. So I have to kind of think about my schedule and how that's going to work out um, well, with work and, and plan all of that. So now I'm just waiting for the doctor to come in. He's um, specialized in proton therapy and he treats a lot of head and neck type of cancers and base of the skull treatments, so I am in good hands. Um, I did already meet with him virtually um, through a video visit, but I haven't met him in person yet, so when he comes in, I can ask the rest of the questions that uh, I've been wanting to ask, um, although now I've already made the decision to, to do the treatments. So I am waiting here for the MRI first, and after that we'll do the CAT scan, and then they are going to fit me for a mask where they're gonna make this mold um, that's gonna go on my face and the whole point of that is to keep everything very still for the treatment because you want it to be as precise as possible. Uh, so definitely don't want any movement. When I first got my radiation gamma knife back in 2019, they actually put screws, um, they pinned my head and it went through my skin and everything. It was kind of bar barbaric. But this time, and the last time I got it, it was a mask, so they just put it over your face. So if you're claustrophobic, that's probably not really great, but thankfully I'm not, so I will be fine. I'll just add another mask to my collection. Okay, so I'm done with my appointment and I'm locked to my car now. Go home. So the other difference is that there is SBRT or SRS, so it's called radiosurgery. SBRT is for stereotactic body 
radiation therapy versus SRS, which is just stereotactic radio surgery. It's the same exact thing, except the one is in the brain and spinal cord, and then the other one is in the rest of the body, like your organs and you know pancreas, liver, that sort of stuff. So it's called radio surgery because it's given at a higher dose and it's very precise and accurate. And so that's why it's called radio surgery because it's not like just a wide area of radiation that they're gonna do, but it's for one area, like if you had a lesion in the liver per se, and they wanna destroy that so they can do SBRT where they focus a higher dose of radiation to that area over three to five treatments within a couple of weeks or so versus the, the radiation where you would go every single day for six weeks at a lower dose. Okay, time for a quick coffee break, or should I say mushroom coffee break. So this is Rise, it's the brand of the mushroom coffee that I use that I order from online. And all you have to do is just put it in hot water and mix it up and you have your cup of very delicious coffee. So here's my plan. I am going to be starting radiation in a couple of weeks. So. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to go on a ketogenic diet, a therapeutic ketogenic diet during that time while I'm doing the radiation. And the radiation is gonna be uh, for two weeks and then after that I'm done. So why a ketogenic diet? As you all know, the ketogenic diet is a low carbohydrate and high fat diet. And it's sort of like a fasting mimicking diet. And there's a lot of benefits to fasting in terms of uh, cancer treatment and it being used as an adjunct to chemotherapy and radiation. And I have done a lot of fasting since I've had cancer. I mean, I've done a three day water only fast a few times. I've done a five day one and then I've done a seven day one. And then I've also been on the ketogenic diet for most of my cancer journey actually um, on and off and I um, do a lot of intermittent fasting, one meal a day. Um, I've done uh, calorie restricted. Um, and then one time I did a 40 day grapes only diet um, that came from this book called The Grape Cure. So I can make a, another video about fasting in the future if you're interested. Leave the comments below. So based on my own research, and I'm not giving you any medical advice, this is just information that I found, that I found helpful, that I'm going to be doing for myself, so please um, don't take this as medical advice. So these are the different ways that the ketogenic diet can help. So when you give radiation therapy, um, what happens is it damages the DNA. So that DNA damage kind of carries over into the next radiation treatment and then um, that's how the tumor gets destroyed. So what the ketogenic diet does is that it will improve the DNA repair mechanism in normal cells and impair the DNA uh, repair mechanism in tumor cells. So that's very helpful in destroying the tumor. So another thing that happens is that the tumor cells will repopulate in between the radiation treatments and what the ketogenic therapeutic diet does is that it will decrease that ability for the tumor cells to repopulate. So it kind of keeps it lower before the next treatment and then that way you have less tumor cells to kill and you have better effects. So normal cells can activate the normal cell cycle checkpoint so that it goes into this um, resistant state where they don't get killed by the radiation. So the ketogenic diet will enhance that and it's going to redistribute the normal cells into this cell cycle that is radio resistant. The other thing that makes the tumor cells resistant is their hypoxic environment. So when there is oxygen, it really helps to make radiotherapy work better. The tumor cells will become more resistant as they're more hypoxic. So what the ketogenic diet does is it kind of weakens these hypoxic cells by cutting off its glucose supply and its energy source. These tumor cells are also very smart and so then with the glucose being high in the environment, what happens is that the tumor cells release these antioxidant substrates which come out like lactate and glutathione. They will neutralize the reactive oxygen species, which is the ROS. Uh, which is what you really need to kill off the tumor cells, but when they're in a higher glucose environment, um, then they can release these substrates 
and then that will uh, then neutralize the ROS and that's how they become uh, more resistant to the radiation. So the ketogenic diet will then lower uh, the tumor cells ability to release these substrates and therefore allow them to die off from the radiation. So basically my plan is to be really strict on this diet. I'm going to be using my Keto Mojo, which is um, a glucometer that I use that measures your ketone levels and your glucose level. And that allows you to calculate this uh, GKI, which is the glucose ketone index. It's a number that you can get uh, based off of uh, the readings that you get. And the goal is really to stay at around one to two if you have cancer. Honestly, it's been a real struggle for me to ever go into ketosis unless I'm fasting. I have not been able to do it very effectively with the diet because I was really avoiding trying to eat meat. I guess this time I'm going to eat a lot more fish, a lot uh, more healthy fats. Um, I'm just going to have to really figure out what I'm going to do. Um, so I'm kind of excited because I've never been able to really get into a therapeutic keto range. So this time I'm going to kickstart it by doing a 24 hour fast and that should get me into ketosis and then I can kind of take off from there. I'm going to be measuring my numbers and I'm going to be tracking how I feel and the side effects and all of that. And then I'm going to just make another video about that. The other thing I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be taking some supplements that my naturopath had recommended uh, to take during radiation just to improve potential side effects and to add more protection. There's the acetyl L-carnitine, which is supposed to help with uh, brain fog and fatigue during radiation. And um, she recommended uh, acetylcholine. So that is supposed to help improve memory. I mean, I don't really know how much I would need that because uh, the radiation I'm getting is not really to the other areas of my brain, but uh, mostly involving the brain stem. So I don't think my cognitive function is gonna be affected too much, but I'll take it anyway. Um, and then she also recommended Boswellia extract, and that decreases inflammation in the brain when used alongside with radiotherapy. So that's really good. And I definitely, hello, <laughs> it's my cat. Hi. Wanna say hi? <laughs> this is chicken. This is uh, my son named this cat um, chicken. I don't know why. I think he really likes it. He just thinks chicken is funny. So, um, so yeah, we have a cat named chicken. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. I guess chicken wants to stay with me. All right. You can stay with me. Yeah. So it says here that, um, you know, it's, it's acted on cerebral edema in patients that were irradiated for uh, brain tumors. So that's really good, you know, so I definitely want to lower the inflammation and um, the ketogenic diet will also do that. And the other thing she recommended was melatonin and that's supposed to prolong survival time and improve the quality of life. Melatonin is used a lot to protect from radiation and I actually uh, take high doses of it before my scan. So I'll take um, about 200 or 300 milligrams before I go for my CAT scan and my PET scan. So yeah, that's gonna be my plan. I um, am planning to start probably in the beginning of April sometime. So I have some time to prepare and to just really get into my mindset. And I do have scans coming up soon as well. So we're gonna see how everything else looks. Um, I've been having some pain where my rib tumor is. So I'm hoping that it didn't grow, um, or if it did, that it didn't grow very big um, and that there's nothing new. So I'll update you guys when I get my scan results. I am very excited to be starting this diet and I don't know how long I'll do it for after I'm done with radiation, but a lot of times I really need something super drastic like this because it's hard to do things when you don't have a, an end date, like there's no goal or time frame. So for me, I like to do fast and you know more drastic diets for this reason because it really helps to kickstart me into getting more motivated to go back to my anti-cancer lifestyle and routine. Every time I get surgery, it gets disrupted and then it takes me months to really come back and, um, you know, to go back to the gym and go exercise and do these things again. And lately I've really been trying to eat well, but my diet has not been what I want it to be. And so this is kind of like a reset for me and I really want to go hard at it and I really want to beat this. So 
thank you all for sticking around and for listening and i appreciate it so much all of the comments and the prayers and just following along with me i would love it if you hit the like and subscribe button so you can continue to follow along with me in my journey and i will see you in the next video okay bye